originally, obviously, we had the CrossFit Worker of the Day classes. I had come from a personal training background, so that was something that we also offered as well. But just as time went on, we realized that our members were interested in particular you know, disciplines, whether it's powerlifting or Olympic lifting or maybe even yoga. It was something that, for me, seemed like the natural evolution of our gym, that if we could diversify our offerings, we would give our members more things to work on, more things to be engaged with, and um, more reasons to stay, ultimately. So, all in all, we offer over 100 classes per week. The majority of those are CrossFit group classes, but we also have diapers and dumbbells, which is our postpartum class. We have our Fit 55, our master's class. We have uh, four different levels of CrossFit kids classes. We've got anti-gravity, which is a gymnastics class. We've got strong fit, which is just kind of a strong man training class. We have open gym hours. We have a short circuit, which is kind of like, for lack of a better word, a boot campy type class, which for a lot of people is a nice segue into CrossFit. So one of the things about living in the city, especially in New York City, is that there's no shortage of things to do, of options. There's a million amazing you know, Chinese restaurants. There's a million amazing galleries and things to do and activities and events. Um, and I think the people in the city are used to having that variety of options. So, you know, like CrossFit's not the only thing to do. We're competing with a lot of other really amazing things. Part of the diversity of what we do is trying to make, give people a lot of options, a lot of things to do, a lot of reasons to want to come to the gym, a lot of ways to engage them um, on different levels. There's a lot of different things happening at the gym. We want to make this feel as, as diverse and dynamic and as varied as the city that we live in. So we have preschool programs, so our youngest members are three years old where they're engaging with the program. We have members in their 60s, 70s, 80s who are also engaging the program in their own way. And what we want is you know, to be a community gym where people from the neighborhood can come, they can feel safe, they can feel like there's a place for them at this gym, they can see other people, and they can see that full spectrum of fitness happening under one roof. So the kid who's just learning you know, their first handstand or learning basically how to engage with fitness in a fun and productive way to someone who's 65 years old, who's learning how to maintain an independent and mobile lifestyle, you know, who's doing it just to uh, stay out of uh, the, the nursing home. We have two spaces directly across the street from each other, and especially in New York City, that's a very rare thing to do. We were getting so big, we had the problem of too much business, which is an awesome problem to have, but nevertheless a problem, where our classes were getting jam-packed and we were having to like program around having a 30-plus person class or whatever the case might be. Um, and we were thinking about going to RSVP, which I didn't want to do. If I was a member of a gym, I wouldn't want to have to register for all my classes. So we expanded with the idea that we want to make this as easy as we can for our members. So we want to like bend over backwards for our members to make their experience as seamless, as fluid, as, as easy as they can. So I try to come to this from the perspective of I'm indebted to my members, right? I work for them. They don't have the privilege of working with me. I have the privilege of working for them. And if I do a good job, they're gonna keep coming. And it's, it's sort of a positive feedback loop where if they're happy, they're gonna bring you know, more business to the gym and we're able to you know, provide better benefits for our coaches, provide better facilities, provide better equipment. But it all comes back to how can I make sure that they are happy because ultimately I work for them. You know, it's not that they're paying for the privilege to train under at our gym or with me, it's I'm, I'm creating the opportunity for them to come and, and, and if I'm successful, then they keep coming back and everybody wins, hopefully. You know, from our, our preschool class to our adults class to some of our variations in class, um, and they all sort of kind of follow a similar format, but, you know, we're, we really try to hold true to that, you know, constantly varied functional movements, high intensity, and maybe we have a particular bias that will shift towards with a particular class. Really, they're, they're varying versions of the same thing. It might be a Fit 55 class, it might be, you know, a bunch of four-year-olds running around, um, but the, the same ethos is there of what we're trying to accomplish in terms of delivering fitness to our members. So I, I see a lot of par parallels between ecology and running a CrossFit business. And I think of our CrossFit gym as sort of a little ecosystem. And that ecosystem is only as healthy as how biodiverse it is. So for us, what that biodiversity means is having a variety of programs, which is kind of like a variety of niches for people to explore. So you have the people who are your hardcore CrossFit group class members, which is really our bread and butter. But we have all these other niches that people can begin to explore and to exploit and take advantage of. What that does is it just makes a more diverse, a more well-rounded, a more engaging and interesting community. Because what we want is we want kids, we want older folks, we want people who are into strength sports, we want people who are competitive CrossFitters. And when you have that diversity of population in your gym, it just makes it a much more engaging, interesting, diverse, kind of fun place to be.
for one, developing some confidence that they can, that they can do this stuff, that they, they don't have to kind of just accept that they're gonna be stagnant and, you know, that the decline is just inevitable. I think that's probably the biggest benefit. Obviously, there's a bunch of physical benefit too, but just that mental benefit of like, you know, I can do things, I can carry things, I can pick things up off the floor and not kind of fall into decrepitude. I think for me, that's the biggest one.